ಹವಾಮಹೇ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಮುಪಮಶ್ರವಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಆನ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ನೂತಿ ಭಿತ್ಪೀಡಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಾಧಿಪತ ನಮ ಷಭಂ ಚರ್ಷಣೀನಾಶ್ವರೂಪಮದಾಭ್ಯಂ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಓಂ ತದ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪರಮಂ ಪದಂ ಸದಾ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಸೂರಯ ದಿವಿ ವಚಕ್ಷುರಾತ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಹ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಋಷಿಭ್ಯೋ ನಮ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ಅರ್ವಿಯಾನ್ ಉತ್ತರಭಾದ್ರ ಉತ್ತರಭಾದ್ರ ಪೂರ್ವಭಾದ್ರ ಐ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ನೋ ಯೋನ್ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಟ್ This is a mantra for again another form of another rudra basically ahir buddhya is another ahir buddhya or ahir buddhya is another uh, uh, another of the 11 rudras is a rudra a form of shiva this is a mantra for ahir buddhya as the lord of the uttara bhadra nakshatra ಅಹಿರ್ಬುಧಿಯಥಮಿ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠೋ ದೇವಾನುತಮಾನುಷಾಣ ತಂ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಸೋಮ ಪಾಸೋಮ್ಯಾಸ ಪ್ರೋಷ್ಠಪದ ಸೋ ಅಭಿರಕ್ಷಂತಿ ಚತ್ವರ ಏಕಮಿಕರ್ಮ ದೇವಾ ಸೋಷ್ಠಪದ ಸಿಯಾನ್ ವದಂತಿ ಉತ್ತರಭಾದ್ರ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರ ಗ್ರಹ ಅರ್ವಯನ್ ಶುಕ್ರ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ಶನಿ Okay, good. <coughs> okay, Shani. Uh, there are two essence of the Shani Mantra. One is an Ushnik and one is Gayatri. Uh, first I will do the Ushnik. Uh, Om Chamagni Ragni Vizkara Shanna Sabudu Surya Chem Vato Vat Varapa Apachira the other mantra is this is the the previous one was in ushtik chandas and this is in gayatri uh, om channo devi rabhishtaya apo bhavantu pitaye chamyo rabhisravantu na this is the mantra for shani so mathura dai chit now actually that reminds me we did shani mantra today actually yesterday was a very important day to pray to shani yesterday was a trayodashi thi that too in a krishna paksha if shanivaram and trayodashi thi come together is called shani trayodashi and that that day is considered to be a very important day for praying to shani if you pray to shani on that day you will get 
much quicker results than on any other day. If you do any Shani Mantra on that day, it is equivalent to thousand times, thousand times the count compared to normal times. So it's a very powerful day. That too, in the Krishna Paksha, in the waning fortnight, when the Krishna Trayodasi comes on a Shanivaram, that is even more powerful. Compared to Shukla Shani Trayodasi, Krishna Shani Trayodasi is even more powerful. And, and the whole of yesterday was actually uh, Krishna Trayodasi Tithi. So it was a very auspicious day. Unfortunately, I could not tell you earlier. I forgot to tell you guys last week. So if you if you did any Shani Mantra, it would have been good. And what I did was, I did a puja in the afternoon. There are some, there is some prasad. From the from the puja, so I brought it here. You can have it after the class. I will leave it here. So have the if you if you pray to Shani and if you make any prasad with the uraddal and til basically mixed with rice. It says mashodhanam tilayir mishram. So uraddal rice mixed with sesame seed. That is a prasadam that Shani likes. Black till. Black till. Black sesame seed. White also you can use, but preferably black. So black sesame seeds and urad dal with rice. If you if you cook that and give it to Shani, he will he will be he will be happy. So there is there is some prasad you can have at the end of the class. Okay, so we are as far as our uh, as far as our BPHS is concerned. Where are we? In our species birth. So in Santanam's version, the chapter number is 86. We finished 85 in the last class, and we are on chapter 86. Is that right? Yeah. We have to do the remedial measures for Bhartha and Amavasya. So we'll do Amavasya and Trayodasi Chaturdasi today. So the shlokas are Maitreya Yadarsya Jata Anam Mata Pitro Daridrata what it means is <coughs> okay you have different yeah. that's okay whatever you are taking is not in the whole it will be a different chapter these two are based on the same source so you should have it you should have the same verses whereas his source is different that's a Tirugu version Look for Dasya Janma Shantya Dhyaya. It will probably be 86 plus or minus. See, here it's 86. Probably for you 87 or 88 or 89. Because Dishi Janma has a few extra. Yeah. So what it means is, O Maitreya, Dasya Jata Naam means for those who, those who are born on the Dasya day, like we discussed in the last class, Dasya basically is normally translated as uh, new moon, Amavasya, it could actually mean when moon is just visible rather than moon is, Amavasya is basically the day when moon is not totally invisible, he is a little invisible and he is going towards totally, being totally invisible. And at the end of Amavasya, he is totally invisible. And later he starts becoming visible. So here it says, Dasya, it could actually be, uh, for example, Shukla Pratipat, instead of being Amavasya, we don't know for a fact. Let's assume that it is Amavasya. So for those who are born on Amavasya, Mata Pitro Daridrata. Chapter 86 or 88. Amavasya Dosham. Mata Pitro Daridrata. What it means is, for mother and father, there will be poverty. So the result, if somebody is born on Amavasya, is poverty for parents some loss of wealth for parents. Tad dosha pariharaya. So to get relief from that dosha, that weakness, uh, that inauspicious factor, chantim kuryad vichakshana. Vichakshana means one who is, uh, one who has discretion, one who is learned, he should do chantim kuryad, means do some uh, pacifying action, remedial measures basically. So to get relief from that dosha, Remedial measures have to be undertaken. That's what Parashara is saying. So now the question is, because the result is Mata Pitra or Daridrata, if somebody is born on Amavasya, and let us say parents are really, really well off, and there isn't anything 
financially there isn't anything bad happening to them they are fine do you think that you should do this remedial measure or say well for some reason it's not working you should do it. you should still do it okay i'll leave it to you if you if your judgment is that oh it doesn't really matter in this case you can leave it but if you are suspicious well who knows who knows what will happen tomorrow so if you if you are not sure then it's better to be safe and follow parasara and do the do the santi and what is the santi kalashasthapanam krutva prathamam vidhipurvakam उदुंबरवटाश्वत्थचोता when you do satnarayan vatam for example you put that kalasham you put a, a a bowl a metal bowl you put water in it and then you put the you put coconut on top of it so he is basically talking about that kalasha sthapanam krutva prathamam vidhipurvakam means uh, prathamam means first vidhipurvakam means as per the vidhi so he is saying for doing the kalasha sthapana obviously there are some vidhis there are some procedures so use the procedures for kalasha sthapana and do the kalasha sthapana उदुंबर वटा अश्वत्थ चोता नाम पलवा तथा विच मीन उदुंबर वटा अश्वत्थ चोता दीज आर ऑल दीज आर ऑल बेसिकली डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ट्री आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू ट्रांसलेट दम बंजन एक्सेट्रा या या यू कैन ट्रांसलेट इन टू तेलुगु वेरी नाइसली जस्ट नो ही ट्रांसलेट शशांक ट्रांसलेट इन टू तेलुगु ही रेड फ्रॉम हिज तेलुगु एक्सनाचर द थिंग इज ट्रांसलेटिंग ऑल दीज इन टू इंग्लिश इज डिफिकल्ट This particular author has translated as banjan, wild fig, pi- people. Again, people. I don't know if it's an English word. Mango, margo. He translated, but we don't really have perfect words in English, so I will not translate. But these are some standard trees that you have in India. Any tree should be able to know. If you say udumbara, vata, achatha, chota. Also, it says later sanimba nam. So nimba, nimba means neem, neem tree. So for all, from all these different trees, pallavam sathha. Pallavan means Not just leaves. Palava is actually like very young leaves, tender leaves. Yeah, tender leaves. Yeah, tender leaves. That's the word. So take take tender leaves. In Telugu, we call them chuguru, basically. Mm-hmm. So it's basically tender leaves from these these trees. You take them, and he also says, "Sanimba nam cha mula ani pacha sattra vinikshipe." So he says the roots also. Mula ani is root, and pacha ha means. Yeah, twacha is actually literally skin. Twacha yeah. means twacha. Twak means skin. So here, twacha means what is the skin of tree? Bark. Basically, the the bark of the tree uh, of the root uh, of the bark of the trunk. So if you take the trunk of these trees, if you scrap some bark, take that bark as well as some tender leaves as well as the roots of all these different uh, trees, different kinds of trees. Actually. The translation in Santanam Sushil is missing all these. He only says fresh leaves. He doesn't say other thing. But clearly the verses are saying yeah. the roots, the bark, and the tender leaves. So put all those in the kalsha. So you had this bowl in which you put water. So put all those and then pancharatna ani nikshipya vastra yugmeena veshta ye. Pancharatna ani nikshipya means the five gems. Please. Five gems. What are the five gems? He doesn't specify. Yeah. it doesn't make our life easy <laughs> so you can take a guess what those are you can for example maybe diamond emerald etc all these nine gems that we have for the planets maybe you can use those or if you are not if you are not if you don't have for example diamond emerald emerald you can basically remove the expensive ones like diamond emerald ruby and take the cheaper ones so it's a good idea to select from the navratna take the cheaper five so he says Use five gems. So put them under vastar yugme ana vesta ye. What does it mean? Cloth. Cover with a pair of cloths. So what you do is you have this bowl, the kalash, in which you put water and these fresh leaves, roots, and bark of trees, and the five gems, and then on top of it you put a coconut. Even though he did not say, he said vidhipurvakam. So that means use the standard procedures. And for kalashasthapana, standard procedure is put a coconut on on it. 
so paste apply turmeric paste on the coconut and then put the coconut on the colors and on the coconut you put one cloth and then to the colors basically you wrap it with a cloth so you you are you are basically applying two cloths so that is what it means vastra yugnyana vesti yes vastra vastra pardon me does he say it is rakta vastra he doesn't say what what but the thing is the tradition is one is yellow one is red okay. so th- th- that is the tradition so on the top you put a yellow cloth and bottom you put a red cloth that is the tradition then sarve samudra iti chapo hishtha ditjuche na cha amantya kala setacha thapa edvah nikonake so he says after you put all these in the kalacha you use the sarve samudra there is a mantra there is a vedic chant called sarve samudra and there is also a vedic chant called apohishta apohishta mayobho <coughs> yeah that one but the interesting thing is he says sarve samudra iti cha apohishta adi trijuchena cha what is the third one trijuchena means three uh, three means uh, three ruk means the mantra. vedic chant so trijuchena means with the three vedic chant so he he didn't specify what is the third one So when you do the Kalsa Sthavana, for Varuna obviously there are three different Vedic chants that are popular. So Sarve Samudra, Apo Hishtha and there is a third one which he did not specify. So hopefully if you are getting this puja done by a priest, hopefully the priest will know the other one. Otherwise you could just use for Varuna, for example when you, when you, when you do Satinarayan Vatham, there is a mantra for Varuna. Imam Me Varuna Shridhi Hava Majja, maybe you can do that. When you are not sure, you can, you can just add things. but obviously he is talking about sanctifying the colors using three vedic chants and then amantya kala setatya sthapaye dvahni konake so using these three vedic chants you amantriya that means you sanctify the kalasha the words in the kalasha and then tatya sthapaye and then that sthapaye means it should be established vahni konake can you guess what that means do you know what vahni means agni kona means angle so what is agni fire angle southwest so what southwest southeast 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 basically agneya in telugu i mean in, in sanskrit it is easy you just say for agni it is agneya very easy to come uh, see the term so in the agneya direction or the southeast direction of the puja area you should put the kalasha so this book is saying southwest right? which book oh it says southwest actually mine also see like i told you earlier gc G- sharma and santanam even though they have two different versions they are basically the rumor is mostly they are written by the same person there was a gc sharma and santanam versions differ in some chapters but later other chapters were basically done by the same person so both are actually by the same author what does the verse say if you go to the sanskrit verse what does the end of the fourth verse say no, but in the bracket it is here as agni kona okay so that obviously southeast only right that's right here he just says southwest direction mm-hmm. but what does the verse say does it does it still say vahni kona ke or it, yeah mm-hmm. vahni kona means vahni means agni so it has nothing to do with southwest okay. so basically they they made the same mistake that uh, seshu made when when i asked to translate or maybe you looked at that that's why you said southwest okay southeast yeah the translation is wrong vahni kona is south southeast only <coughs> then darshyasya deva yoscatha chandra bhaskar jo pramat pratimam swarna jam nityam rajatim tam rajam tatha so it says darshyasya deva yo means for the amavasya the devatas chandra bhaskar yo moon and sun are the devatas are the deities of amavasya so in that order kramat means respectively so moon and sun you basically want pratima means you want their idols so you want idols made for sun and moon and then establish them pratima swarna jam nityam rajatim tamrajam tatha so either made with gold or silver or copper that is what the shloka is saying Lord 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 is 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 Rahu, Rahu. 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 right? Rahu. Uh, tithi, tithi is by Rahu. But in general, the concept of tithi is ruled by sun and moon. Oh, Tithis right. are based on sun and moon angle. Right. So 
So that is why he is saying current moon are the lords. So have a have an idol of moon and an idol of sun made with either gold or silver or copper. Apya yasveti mantrena savita pascha tame vacha upajarai samaradhya tato homam samacharet. So with the apya yasva apya yasva samet de that chandra mantra. And then there is a Savita mantra for uh, uh, Surya, for sun. So those two mantras, use those two Vedic chants for uh, consecrating those idols, idols and establishing moon and sun in them. Basically invoking moon and sun in those idols. Upajarai samarajya. Then he is saying, not only the mantras, you do those uh, mantras respectively for the two of them. Then upajarai. So he is saying, do the upajaras. Upajara means various services that you do. For example, there is a Shorsopajar Puja that you do. You give them water to drink, uh, water to wash their hands, water to wash their feet. You feed them some water, uh, give them some water to drink, <coughs> give them a bath, give them a cloth, give them Yajnopavitam. So, this is a standard procedure for Puja. So, he is saying Upajarai that clearly indicates that you have to either do Shorsopajar Puja or probably even more. So, you do you do Upajaras for both of them, both moon and sun, do a Upajar Puja. Upajarai samaradhya tato homam samacharet and then, so first kalasha consecrated, consecrated with the mantras, placed in the Agni Trikona, uh, Agnaya direction, then these two idols invoked with the Vedic chant and then do shorts of Jarapuja and then he says tato homam samacharet, then do the homa and how should you do the homa? Samithesta charum vidvan krame najuhyad vrati he says samidhas. Samidhas means approximately translating the dry grass. Yeah. Samidha is not exactly twig. You have the darbha, right? That is samidha. The, the darbha is basically, it is kind of like a dry grass. Not any grass, but a particular kind of grass. Particular kind of grass. So the dry grass is samidha. You, you could even use uh, wood twigs also. So, with those and Charu. What is Charu? Good catch. Yeah. Charu is basically some food that you offer, depending on Devata. For different Devatas, when you do the Homa, you offer different kind of food. So, it's basically some cooked food. So it can be, for example, uh, ghee, paisam that you make. You cook rice with uh, with good, with jaggery, and then you you offer it in the homam. So it can be that. Or what you could do is, for sun basically, you could cook wheat, and for moon you could coo you could cook rice. Right. So you could make uh, uh, wheat kheer and also rice kheer, and then offer those. So that is that is an idea. He doesn't specify exactly what, but you can use common sense. So he says, first Samidhas and then Charu. Samidhas te Charum Vidwan, learned person, Kramena, in the order, Juhyad Rati. So first do with the Samidhas and then do with the Charu. Juhyad means you offer in the, offer the oblation in the fire. Bhatya Savitru Mantrena, Somo Dhenuscha Mantrata. So with the, with devotion, when you are basically, when you are offering these, these things in the, that I mentioned, in the Homa, you should be using the Savitru Mantra and then Somo Dhenusta Mantra. So first you do the Savitru Mantra. There is a mantra for Savitru Devata, so you use that. And then Somo Dhenum, Somo Arvantam, that mantra for Soma, for, uh, for Moon. So those two mantras you have to offer. How many times? Ashto Tarase Dambhapi, Ashtra Vimsyati Revacha. Ashto Tarasa Dambhapi, Ashta Vinchadre Baba, Abhishekam Tathakuriya, Dampat Josya Saputrayo. So Ashto Tarasa Dham means 108 times or Va Api Ashta Vinchadre Baba. That means or 28 times. If you give this option to your priest, he will take 28. So just tell him to do 108. As a matter of fact, it's, it's easy to even do like 1000 times each mantra. It will not take too long. It will take a few hours. And when you are doing, when you are doing a special puja just once, it's a good idea to do as many times as you can. So that is, uh, that, that, that is a better idea. 
and of course you can do some other mantras also for example for sun there is asatyena rajasa vartamano mantra apart from the mantra that parashara gives which is more popular these days so you could use as many there are so many mantras for surya so many mantras for chandra in the rigveda so you can take several mantras maybe do a mala of each but the ones parashara recommends are these two mantras also for moon you could use apyaya so samajte he says somo dhenum somo ar- that mantra so you use definitely the mantras that parashara gave and maybe some other mantras so do 108 times or 28 times so the main one you can do 108 times and the secondary mantras various other mantras that you do you can maybe do 28 times and then he says abhishekam tatha kuryat dampatyose saputrayo after homa is done you do udvasana basically you disinvoke the gods from the idol and the and the kalash and then you do abhishekam tatha kuriya dampatyose saputrayo so get the parents get husband and wife along with the baby so have them sit down put the baby in their lap and then do abhishekam and alasto with the water from the kalasha the water, when you do all this homa basically the water in the kalasha is charged with that energy and then you use that water to do abhishekam of those people and this reminds me of a Uh, of something that i read on a website sometime back somebody in japan did a study they took water and then in the water basically there is some crystal structure that you can study using microscope so the scientists they they basically studied the crystal structure of water normal water and then they read some nice mantras like just om om they just kept chanting om in front of that water kept that in front of them chanted for a while and then they looked at the crystal structure it became more orderly the crystal structure it looked very present whereas they put some violent music by violent music i mean disorderly music some some hard rock kind of music and then after an hour of playing that music they looked at the crystal structure in water again it looked very chaotic it basically looked totally messed up and also they put the water in microwave for 10 minutes for, for a couple of minutes they heated it and then they took it out and then they studied it became even more chaotic after they put it in the microwave so they they concluded that there is something going on there is and in our vedic thinking vedantic thinking there is consciousness in everything whether this this book or this mic or this carpet or me or my dress or this ring anything anything you take there is some consciousness which is being impacted by the actions of consciousness around you consciousness of all the people all the objects around you so it is not very surprising from our vedantic point of view but it is interesting that materially and scientifically there is some evidence suggesting that it may be true so coming back to the point here when you do all these mantras especially if you do them right if you pronounce them correctly with correct correct pronunciation as well as correct devotion correct feeling in the heart then that produces certain vibrations and that charges the all the objects around and especially water water is easily charged with energy so that water basically works as a reservoir which which basically captures the energy so you 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 basically use that water to uh, do abhishek abhishek means you basically give them a bath approximately say you give them a shower with that water you basically pour the water on them and usually priest priest do that yeah when we send um, take the agni upon the southeast yeah Practically, a house constructed in the southeast will be with kitchen. Yeah. With countertop and everything else. Yeah. Practical thing, if it is done as well as well. Yeah. So, it obviously will get into the puja room in the northeast. Yeah. No, no, no. no. One second. Let me clarify yeah. one thing. Mm-hmm. This Vahnikonaka doesn't mean mm-hmm. go to the southeastern corner of your house or southeastern corner of your mm-hmm. town or southeastern mm-hmm. corner of your, that, uh, your country. Southeastern corner, corner of the puja area. Yeah. Of that room. Okay. Yeah. whatever room you are doing puja in if you have if you have an area like this if you are doing if suppose this is this if you are putting all this and doing maybe so this corner of this corner so what you can do is suppose this computer is my puja area i'm sitting here i can have my homakundam here i can have the devatas here in the east in, in this corner i can have the kalash okay mm. and then hiranyam raj dam chaiva कृष्ण धेनु दक्षिण ब्राह्मणा भोजयेत क्षेम वाप्नुयात 
So it says, Hiranyam Rajatam Chaiva, Gold and Silver, Krishna Dhenu Stya Dakshina, a black cow. Krishna Dhenu means black cow. Dakshina, Dakshina means a donation. No, Dakshina, that Dakshina is different. This is Dakshina. So this is basically Dakshina, like good Dakshina, like that. Basically a voluntary donation. So give a black cow some gold and some silver as Dakshina to the, obviously to the priest who did the homam for you. Brahmanan bhoja yet sekja tatak shemam vapnuyat and then get some Brahmanas fed, feed some Brahmanas with food basically, offer food to them and then tatak, that way shemam vapnuyat, they will obtain good results. And here when it says Brahmana, don't think that it's just Brahmana who wears a sacred head, who has a nice uh, vibhuti or uh, Urdhva Pundras on his face. It's not really Brahmana that way. It is basically a learned person. So even if somebody is not a Brahmin but he has the temperament of a Brahmin, he, you can feed him. And in general you can feed anybody, not just Brahmanas, Brahmanas particularly. So get some learned people, feed them food. That is, that is an uh, always auspicious. Now, and one more thing, if you are the Brahmin, suppose you, somebody did this puja and they are giving you gold, silver, krishna dhenu, etc., black cow, if you take it, what is the karmic implication for you? Is there a karmic implication for you? Yes. Obviously, any time you are taking something freely from somebody else, that is karma. So, it is a karma for you. So, basically, uh, apart from all the ritual that has been done, also the fact that some Dakshina is, be, is being given, that basically transfers some karma. So, the Brahmin who is taking the Dakshina, he should be capable of taking some karma on his, himself. Because this, this baby who was born in Amavasya, he has some bad karma. That is why all these bad results are ascribed. The Brahmin is taking some of the karma on him. So, it has to be somebody who has that caliber to take the karma on him. Otherwise, he should be able to burn that karma through his own sadhana. If he is somebody, a Tom, Dick and Harry, who takes the Dakshina, then he is in trouble. So, that is again not a, not a great idea. So, in general, if somebody is doing some puja and they are feeding people or giving Dakshina to people and they give you something freely, you should think. I mean, I am not saying don't take it. But you should maybe do extra sadhana in the next week. Do a little extra. If you do, let's say, 10 malas of a particular mantra, maybe do 20 malas in the next week because there can be some impact on you. When you take something, something freely, you are obviously taking some karma along with it. How should the baby be before the time the parents do this puja? Usually they do it on the 21st day or 41st day. Of the birth of the child? Yeah. So, so the first of 21st is ideal. You can do it on the 21st day or even 11th day. 11th day is actually too early. 21st day is common for many of these shantis. Doing it on the 21st day is common. But you can do on any good day. On the 21st day of after the birth. Yeah. On the 21st day counted since the day of birth. And, and does that help mitigate some of the doshas? That is what Parashara says. Yes. Yeah. Especially if you have a priest of good caliber who does all the mantras accurately it will definitely have an impact. And then... What if you didn't get a chance to do it then? Can you do it later? You can do it later. You can do it later. And if the if the baby is no longer a baby, but let us say 30 year old, you can still do it. And then you can have, have the person sit and parents basically sit on both the sides. Obviously not sit in the lap, like, mm. like I said earlier. But you can have all of them sit together and do the, do the Abhishekam. You can do it anytime. I know people who did, who had like doshas like Sankranth dosha. I know, I knew a few examples where there was a very strong Sankranth dosha and the whole other chart was good but they were struggling because of that Sankranth dosha and then that person was like 28, 29 in one case and 30s in another case. They did Sankranth dosha uh, upaharam, the, the puja and after that a lot, lot of improvements came. So I know practically that if these these remedies are done even at the age of 30 they can have they can have some results and so what if the parents are not around you could do it on your own yeah you can do it on your own but this particular amavasya dosha is particularly bad for parents rather than for yourself oh really yeah so 
if you if your parents are not around maybe maybe i may, may you may not even want to so although the child was born with amar amavasya dosha the parents are going to suffer more than the child yes parents are going to have poverty according to parashara and poverty doesn't just mean wealth poverty can be happiness poverty of happiness also basically being deprived of everything that's valuable so it's basically particularly bad for parents but even if you don't have parents and if you think that you are being you are suffering because of the amavasya dosha you can do it you can do it on your own no problem at all now the next chapter is krishna chaturdashi dosha we will do we may not be able to finish it but we will start it and then we'll leave it is that recording is that the light blinking on in the seat not light yeah the green light okay <coughs> next one will be then after we are done with this can you rectify a chart for us actually i wanted to do another chart some so i will Uh, somebody somebody in the class is mother is sick so we'll do that if there is time we'll do otherwise we'll do another time okay right now it is krishna chaturdashi oh yeah actually right now today is krishna chaturdashi so we are doing we are doing the krishna chaturdashi remedy so that's interesting so the, this is chapter 87 krishna chaturdashi janma shanti adhyaya krishna paksha chaturdashya shadbhage suphalam kramat जन्म चेत्र थमे भागे तथा ज्ञेय शुभम द्विज इन द कृष्ण पक्ष चतुर्दशी मीन्स इन द वेनिंग फोर्थ नाइट चतुर्दशी तिथि छठ भागेशु मीन्स इन द सिक्स पार्ट्स ऑफ इट इफ यू डिवाइड द चतुर्दशी इनटू सिक्स पार्ट्स देन इन द सिक्स पार्ट्स फलम मीन्स रिजल्ट क्रमात मीन्स रेस्पेक्टिवली सो ही सेइंग आई विल टेल यू रेस्पेक्टिवली द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ द सिक्स पार्ट्स ऑफ चतुर्दशी सो व्हाट दिस मीन्स इज अनलाइक अमावस्या the whole of chaturdashi is not inauspicious or the whole of chaturdashi is not inauspicious in the same way so depending on which one sixth of of chaturdashi krishna chaturdashi you are born on the results are different so a question on this is when we do the mootha we also avoid the krishna chaturdashi yes chaturdashi basically yes so is the six parts applicable to that also that only one i would think so yes he didn't specifically say but i would imagine so if but in general because chaturdashi is not considered auspicious for many muhurtas don't consider it but you must do at least consider the auspicious one six okay but in general it's not a good idea to start on chaturdashi janma che prathame bhage tata gneyam shubham dvija he says if the janma happens if the birth happens in the first one six tata gneyam shubham dvija then auspicious result should be understood wo oh, leonard uh, leonard brahmin so what parasha is saying is the first one sixth of chaturdashi krishna chaturdashi is actually auspicious it's not inauspicious vitiye pitaram hanti mataram chatrutiyake chatuthe matulam chaiva panchame vamchanaashanam in the second one six pitaram hanti that means kills father he doesn't have to literally kill the father but give lot of suffering to father and then mataram cha tritiyake in the third one six mother mother will suffer chaturthe matulam jeva in the fourth one third uh, fourth one six it is ankul matula means mother's, mother's uh, brother. brother this is a krishna chatur krishna chatur the city that's like a negative time to be born yeah it's usually a negative time to be born except the first one six of the tithi so first one six is auspicious second one six of the tithi is basically approximately the second four hours the first four hours are auspicious the second four hours are bad for father third four hours are bad for mother the fourth four hours are bad for maternal uncle and then the fifth one panchame vamshanashanam fifth one is bad for the whole family it is bad for the it's a generation whole generation that's what it means that's, that's what it means vamshanashanam means the whole family basically that generation and even father mother that will be the end of the uh, yeah basically the, gener- the, the, the that lineage you know, will basically you know, suffer yeah. the whole lineage will suffer everybody alive uncles father grandfather everybody will suffer basically he will bring lot of disrespect to the family sasthedu dhananashasya sasthedu dhananashasya atmano vanashaye bhava taddosha pariharartham shantim kuriyat prayatnata sasthedu in the sixth one धरणाशस्यात्मी मरी वेल्थ इज लास्ट 
ત્યાં આત્મનો નાશે એવા આર સેલ્ફ ઇઝ ડિસ્ટ્રોય સો બેસિકલી એવરીથિંગ દેટ ધ પર્સન વોન્ટ ટુ ડુ વિલ બી અબ્સ્ટ્રક્ટેડ ધ હોલ ધ એન્ટાયર સેલ્ફ ઇઝ બેસિકલી ડિસ્ટ્રોય સો હી સેઝ ધીસ ઇઝ બેસિકલી ધ વર્સ્ટ સિક્સ વન ઇઝ ધ વર્સ્ટ યુ હેવ યુ ઇધર ડોન્ટ હેવ મની ઓર યુ હેવ ઓલ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ અબ્સ્ટકલ તદ્દોષ પરિહારાર્થમ શાંતિમ કુર્યાત પ્રયત્ન સો ફોર રિલીફ ફ્રોમ ધીસ પર્ટિક્યુલર દોષ ધીસ પર્ટિક્યુલર ઇનાસ્પીશિયસ ફેક્ટર શાંતિમ કુર્યાત પ્રયત્ન સો વિથ લાટ ઓફ એફર્ટ યુ હેવ ટુ ડુ શાંતિ યુ હેવ ટુ ડુ રેમડિયલ મેઝર્સ સો હાઉ ડુ યુ ડુ ધ શાંતિ શિવત્ય પ્રતિમા કુર્યાત સૌવર્ણી કર્ષ સંતા તદર્ધાર્ધમિતા વાપી યથા વિત્ત મનોહરા સો હિસે શિવસ્ય પ્રતિમા કુર્યાત ટુ અ પ્રતિમા એન આઈડલ ઓફ શિવા બિકોઝ ચતુર્દશી ઇઝ એ ફેવરેટ તિથિ ઓફ શિવા સો હી સજેસ્ટિંગ ડુઇંગ પૂજા ઓફ શિવા ફોર ચતુર્દશી રેમડી સો શિવસ્ય પ્રતિમા કુર્યાત ડુ અર આઈડલ ઓફ શિવા સૌવર્ણી કર્ષ સંતા યુ શુડ હેવ એ કર્ષા ઓફ ગોલ્ડ કર્ષા ઇઝ બેસિકલી એન ઓલ્ડ મેઝર લાઈક ગ્રામ પાઉન્ડ એટસેટ્રા તદર્ધાર્ધમિતા વાપી આર હાફ ઓફ ઇટ આર ઇવન ક્વાર્ટર ઓફ ઇટ યથાવિત મનોહરા ડિપેન્ડિંગ ઓન યુવર યથાવિત મીન્સ એઝ પર ધ મની દેટ યુ હેવ ડિપેન્ડિંગ ઓન વોટ યુ કેન એફોર્ડ મનોહરા એ વેરી બ્યુટિફુલ આઈડલ સો હી સેઝ હી ગીવ્સ એ ઓબ્જેક્ટિવ એન ઓબ્જેક્ટિવ ક્રાઇટેરિયન લાઈક યુ શુડ હેવ એ કશા ઓફ ગોલ્ડ બટ દેન હી સેઝ આર હાફ આર ક્વાર્ટર ઓફ ઇટ સો બેસિકલી bottom line is it's flexible it doesn't have to be a particular amount of gold but the lesson here is if you can afford a big gold idol you should do it basically depending on what you can afford depending on your financial situation put as much gold as you can in the idol if you can't afford then just make it a copper copper idol with a little bit of gold in it just a little bit of gold thrown in so get an idol made a beautiful idol of shiva bala chandra kiritam cha so how should the idol be the pratima be balachandra kirita you should have a crown made of balachandra so basically the idol should have moon a crescent of moon on the on the head in the head balachandra kirita am cha sweta malyambara anvitam and you should have sweta malyambara so that means what does it mean you should have white clothes and also a white mala yeah. so get a take get some white flowers get a white garland made put it and then give white clothes basically wrap the idol in white clothes he specifically says white trinetram cha vrshasi nam vara bhaya karamatha so trinetram means there should be three eyes in the idol vrshasi nam means the idol should be seated on a bull so along with the nandi basically the idol should be of shiva sitting on an on a bull varabhaya karam atha that means varabhaya karam means yeah, both hands vara one giving as a vara one as abhaya yes yes so varah vara vara abhaya hasta basically abhaya means i am here don't worry if you put hand like this this is called abhaya mudra i am here don't worry i'll take care of it so that mudra so so put, put shiva like this like i showed sorry to those who are listening to the mp3 <laughs> so put varahasta and abhaya hasta and then so like that you get a shiva idol made and then what do you do puja trayambakam cheti mantrena poojam kurijada sandrita avahya varu nair mantre rajar yo mantra tatva vit so त्रयंबकम त्रयंबकम जजामहे सुगंधिम पुष्टिवर्धनम उर्वारुकम इव बंधनान मृत्योर्मुक्षी यमामृतात विद दैट मंत्रा यू डू पूजा सो त्रयंबकम मंत्रा यू डू पूजा आवाह वारुणैर मंत्रै राचार्यो मंत्र तत्व विद सो ए ए प्रीस्ट हु अंडरस्टैंड्स द तत्व ऑफ द मंत्र नॉट जस्ट नोस द मंत्र बट अंडरस्टैंड द फिलॉसफी बिहाइंड द मंत्र द मीनिंग बिहाइंड द मंत्र वेरी वेल दैट काइंड ऑफ प्रीस्ट शुड कम एंड ही शुड डू आवाहना विद द वर्ण मंत्र so he says after doing puja with the trambakam ajama he mantra do some varna mantras and then with the varna mantras do avahana imam me varuna etyevam tatva yami sucha puna so he says imam me varuna then tatva yami with those mantras again uh, do the avahana 
ತ್ವನ್ನ ಅಗ್ನೆ ಇತ್ಯನಯ ಸತ್ವಂ ಸತ್ವಂ ನೋ ಇಚ್ಛಾಪಿಚ ಸೊ ತ್ವನ್ನೋ ಅಗ್ನೆ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಂತ್ರ ಕಾಲ್ ತ್ವನ್ನೋ ಅಗ್ನೆ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸತ್ವಂ ನೋ ಸೊ ವಿತ್ ದೋಸ್ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಮಂತ್ರ ಡೂ ದ ಆವಾಹನ ಆಗ್ನೇಯಂ ಕುಂಭಂ ಆರಭ್ಯ ಪೂಜೆಯೇದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಹಸ್ರಮಾದ್ ಅಗೇಯಂ ಆಗ್ನೇಯಂ ಕುಂಭಂ ಆರಭ್ಯ ಸೊ ಅಗೇ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಲಶ ಶುಡ್ಬಿಯಿಂದ ಸೌತ್ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೂಜಾ ರೋಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟಿಪಿಕಲಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಈಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಆಗ್ನೇಯ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಅಂಡ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸೊ ಪುಟ್ ದ ಕಲಶ ಇನ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಡೂ ದ ಪೂಜಾ ಸೊ ಎಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಶಿವ ಐಡಲ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಕಲಶ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಣ ಮಂತ್ರ ದೆನ್ ಅಗ್ನಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಪುಟ್ ದ ಕಲಶ ಇನ್ ದ ಆಗ್ನೇಯ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನೋ ಭದ್ರೇ ಇತಿ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಭದ್ರ ಅಗ್ನೇಯ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಸೊ ಆನೋ ಭದ್ರ ಆನೋ ಭದ್ರ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಡೂ ದಟ್ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಭದ್ರ ಅಗ್ನೇಯ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಭದ್ರ ಅಗ್ನೇಯ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಅಪರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಡೂ ದಟ್ ಜಪ್ವ ಪುರುಷ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಕದ್ರುದ್ರೇತಿ ತಥಾ ಜಪೇತ್ ಶಂಕರ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಗ್ರಹ ಪೂಜಾ ಚ ಕಾರಜೇತ್ ಸೊ ಪುರುಷ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಪುರುಷ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಫಾರ್ ಶಿವ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಕದ್ರುದ್ರೆ ಕದ್ರುದ್ರಾಯ ದಟ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಕದ್ರುದ್ರಾಯ ಪ್ರಚೇತ ಕದ್ರುದ್ರಾಯ ಪ್ರಚೇತ ಮೀಷ್ಟಮಾಯತಭ್ಯಸೆ ದಟ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಯು ಡು ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸೊ ಪುರುಷ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಕದ್ರುದ್ರಾಯ ಪ್ರಚೇತ ದೆನ್ ಶಂಕರ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಚ ಗ್ರಹ ಪೂಜಾ ಚ ಕಾರ್ಯೇತ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಡು ಶಂಕರ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಐಡಲ್ ಶಿವ ಐಡಲ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಡು ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಡು ದ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ವಿತ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮೇಬಿ ದಮ್ಯ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫೈ ಸೊ ಯಾ ಯು ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ದಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡು ಡು ಶಿವ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡು ಪಂಚಾಮೃತ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡು ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಜ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡು ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಡು ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಫೀಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮೇಬಿ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಗುಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಶಂಕರ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಚ ಗ್ರಹ ಪೂಜಾ ಚ ಕಾರ್ಯೇತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಡು ಪೂಜಾ ಟು ದ ಗ್ರಹಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಡೂ ನೈನ್ ಗ್ರಹಾಸ್ ಪೂಜಾ ಸೊ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಡೂ ದ ಮಂತ್ರ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ಗ್ರಹ ಮೇಬಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಮಮ್ ಸೊ ಡೂ ದಟ್ ಸಮಿಧಾಜ್ಯ ಚೂಂಶ್ಚೈವ ತಿಲಮಾಶಾಂಶ್ಚ ಸರ್ಷಪಾನ್ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥ ಪ್ಲಕ್ಷ ಪಾಲಾಸ ಹಾಜಿರ ಸಮಿಧ ಶುಭಾ ಸೊ ಸಮಿತ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಐ ಸೈಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದ ಸಮಿಧ ಆಜ ಈಸ್ ಘಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಒನ್ ಚರು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಕುಕ್ ಫುಡ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಪಾಯಸಮ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಡೂ ದ ಸಮಿಧಾಸ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದ ಡ್ರೈ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಿಧಾಸ್ ಯು ಡೂ ಘಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದ ಚರು ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ತೆಲ ಮಾಶಾಂಸ್ ಸರ್ಷಪಾನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ತೆಲ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹಸಿಮಿಸ್ತೀಸ್ ಮಾಶಾ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಉರದ್ದಾಲ್ ಸೊ ತಿಲ ಮಾಷಾ ಉರದ್ದಾಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಸ್ಮಿ ಸಿ ಸರ್ಷಪಾನ್ ಸರ್ಸೋಂ ಕಾ ಸೀಡ್ ಸರ್ಸೋಂ ದ ಆವಾ ಇನ್ ತೆಲುಗು ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಆವಾಲು ಇನ್ ಹಿಂದಿ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಸರ್ಸೋಂ ಕಾ ಸರ್ಸೋಂ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ದ ಮಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಮಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಸಸಮಿ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ಉರದ್ದಾಲ್ ದ ವೈಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದಾಲ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದಾಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಟ್ ವೈಟ್ ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ವೈಟ್ ದಟ್ ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದಾಲ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಸಸಮಿ ಸೀಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಮಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದೋಸ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಮಿಧ ಘಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಚರು ಯು ಡೂ ದ ಹೋಮ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥ
and when you do the purusha sukta in the homam you do each verse and then say swaha and then put the uh, put the, uh, put the thing put the ghee or something else in the fire uh, ashta okay we are done mantre na triyambake na tilan vyahrute bhistatha graho omam je vidhivit vidhivat kuryat kshemam tato bhavet so he says mantre na triyambake triyambake na tha so then after doing the other mantras you do the triyambake na that means with the triyambakam vajamahe that mantra you do that mantra tilan vyahrute bhistatha so with special ahutis you do tilan so you do a special ahuti of the sesame seeds while you do the trijambakam majamahe sugandhim pushvadhanam mantra and then you do graha homam you do the various graha mantras 28 times or 108 times each then if you do this kshemam tato bhavet then auspicious results will ensue abhishekam cha jatasya tatvitros chapi mantra vit kurya tato yatha sakti brahmanan bhojaye chudhi then abhishekam the jatasya means the born the new born so you do abhishekam of the new born along with the parents who does the abhishekam mantra vit a brahmana who knows mantras does not everybody that means while you are doing the abhishekam also you are supposed to read some mantras so so basically leave it to a priest you should of asking your your friends to do it you should get the priest to do it then if you then after that yatha shakti based on your capability ब्राह्मणान भोजये सुधी देन विथ ए वेरी प्लेजेंट हार्ट गेट ब्राह्मण स्ट्रेंड विच मीन्स यू डोंट गिव दम फूड एंड से ओ माई गार्ड आई एम स्ट्रेंडिंग सो मच मनी ओ माई गार्ड दट गई आई स्पेंड सो मच मनी टू गेट द फूड दट गई इज ईटिंग ओनली हाफ इज लिविंग दट नाइस स्वीट डोंट थिंक लाइक दट बेसिकली बी ए सुधी दट मीन्स हैव ए वेरी प्लेजेंट हार्ट एंड देन गेट ब्राह्मणा स्ट्रेंड आफ्टर द पूजा सो इफ यू डू विथ द दोषा ऑफ द चतुर्दशी बट कृष्ण चतुर्दशी बट विल बी रिलीव and you have to do it only if you are born in the the last 5 16 of the chaturdashi how, how do you know where how that applies oh if you find the chaturdashi i mean if you find one way is okay i'll show you is the jehora here yes yeah is it the percentage on the yeah you see the percentage oh you see the percentage yeah See, for example, let's take my my chart as an example. Yeah, I was born on Krishna Chaturthi. Yeah. Okay, so if you see my chart, April four, nineteen seventy, seventeen, forty-seven, thirteen, Indian Standard Time, eighty-one, East eight, sixteen, North ten, Madhya Pradesh, India. So if you see here, it says Krishna Chaturthi, right? Yeah, I was actually born on a Krishna Chaturthi after Chaturthi went and just Chaturthi came. So Krishna Chaturthi, what is the percentage left? Eighty-five point nine 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 percent. Now open a calculator. What is hundred divided by six? Sixteen point six six six. So if you subtract that from hundred, so, oops, it's eighty three. Oops. So one second. Eighty three point three 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 three. So if the percentage is above eighty three point three 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 three. Between eighty-three point three 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 and hundred, then he is born in the first one six. Now let's subtract sixteen point six 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 from this. So it says sixty-six point six 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 six, right? So if he is born between sixty-six point six 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 percent and eighty-three point three 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 percent, then it is the second one six, okay? And if you remove sixteen point six six again, you get fifty. So if he is born with fifty percent, when the percentage left in Jehora. Is between 50 and 66.6666. That is basically the third one. One six. You were born in the first. I was born in the first. So for me, no, no, Shanti was done. But you can find out like this. Now let me give an example. Suppose somebody was born when Jehora says Krishna Chaturdasi has 28.3 percent left. For me? Can you start? Can I watch? No, it's not coming up. Not on the screen. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, we turn it on. No, no, you have to. Oh, here in your computer. Okay. How do I do it? Function. Okay. F7. Yeah. You should get it now. Okay. Can you see? Twenty-eight will fall in second. Excellent. So in this example, if you take my my chart, 
it's 85.99 percent. So that means it's in the first 16.66. So it is basically first one. Now the other example, 28.3. Which one is it? Second. Second. No. Wrong. No. What did you say? Is it 28 left? You mean? 28.3 percent of procedure is left. Okay, left. So which one sixth is it? Fifth. Fifth one. Fifth one, right? Fifth one, yeah. It is the second from the last, second from the end. Mm -hmm. So it is the fifth one six. So what is the result of that? If somebody is born like that, once an ashram, destruction of the lineage. Actually, let us see right now. Suppose somebody is born right now. Which one third is this? What is the result? Krishna Chaturdasi, 52.13 percent is left. Fourth. 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 fourth or fourth from end? No, fourth from end. Fifty-two percent means it's just just above fifty percent. Yeah. If, if it is exactly fifty percent, that means three one six are done. Yeah. So it is not yet. There is two percent more left. Yeah. So this is the third one third. So what is the third one six? So what is the result? Mother will be mother's death. Yeah, uh, suffering to the mother. So if somebody is born right now here, there is some problem to the mother of that person. So he should he should take some care about mother. Uh, so, he should do the shanti done and also take some care about mother. Okay, so like this you find which one six. Okay, so everything clear so far? I have an example of Vijaya. Vijaya, your husband's chart has that, right? Where it's in the first place. It's 46.95%. June 20th, 1963. No? 10.20 a.m. Uh, it is not this. Okay, ah, that's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. If you if he is born on Krishna Chaturdasi, find out what percentage. Mm -hmm. What is the percentage and then see if it is less than the percentage left shown by Jehora is less than eighty three point three 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 three. Then there is some problem. If it is less than eighty three point three 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 three. Then one of the five bad results that are given is applicable. So you have to you have to find out what it is and then See if there are similar results. Suppose somebody is born in the third one six, and if mother is suffering, that means she is working in his case. Because all these doshas, maybe there is something else in the chart which is overriding it. Usually, these doshas, if they are applicable, they pull the chart down. But maybe there are some blessings which are. That means his mother is suffering. His mother is suffering, then maybe it is the third one six. So you find out what it is, and then if the dosha is there, then get the shanti done. And the thing is. I just want to make this point. It is important to make this point. The thing is, there are. This is actually a business in India. The shanties, remedial measures, is a huge business in India. There are priests. Unfortunately, priests are supposed to be untouched by money. They are not supposed to be to be running after money. Money should be a tuchha, a very stupid thing for them. For a really learned Brahmin, if you are really learned, if you do mantra sadhana, you will get that attitude. If you are not getting that attitude, that means you are not ca ca you don't have the sufficient spiritual caliber. Unfortunately, it's tough to know by looking at a person what is the person's spiritual caliber. There isn't anything like charm in the face which tells you, oh, this is a great person. There isn't anything like that. Unless you have the internal eye which can see the sukshma sarira and karan sarira of the person, just by looking at the gross thola sarira, you can't really tell the caliber of the person. And unfortunately, there are so many brahmins. So many learned Brahmins, supposedly learned Brahmins, who are just running after the money. So they don't have the spiritual caliber to make these mantras work. Mantra doesn't work just because these particular sounds have an impact. It also works because they have certain spiritual caliber. Unless the Brahmin who is doing these rituals, he has certain sufficient caliber. He has done sadhana of himself. Maybe not in the same mantra, maybe in some other mantra. If he has done that caliber, when he starts sadhana, he will be in a high plane. Immediately his energy rises and he is in a high plane. That person, if he does mantras, they give some impact. But if somebody, if a Tom, Dick and Harry, who is just after money, who has no spiritual caliber, if he does these mantras, probably it's not going to have a big impact. It will still have some impact. But it's not going to work miraculously like Parashara said. So, it is good to, it is a good idea to find a good priest and then stick to him rather than just pay somebody in India and then hope that they are done. I was, I actually know a priest who was telling me a story. Uh, there is somebody in Singapore 
and that person there is a particular santi on every chaturdashi or every nakshatra i forget which one i think a particular nakshatra when it comes a particular santi is supposed to be done basically some brahmins in a shiva temple reading 11 times the namakam and samakam like that somebody recommended to him that remedy so he paid 11 brahmins from singapore he engaged 11 brahmins in chennai told them to read this this particular thing the 11 times rudra namakam basically read it for him on every so and so nakshatra so they said okay and they took that money that took lot of money from him and then this priest this priest that i am talking about he is a very very capable priest he is he doesn't care about money he is a very spiritually advanced yogi and then one day he went there and then at the time when this because this person who paid he was his friend he went he went to the temple they were just chatting and then he found out that they just come to that place on that particular day they just chat and go they don't even do forget 11 times they don't even do one time so yeah they just have a monthly meeting like this corporate board of directors sometimes meet they just chit chat and then go it's like that and then they take money from him and this poor guy he thinks that there are some some good priests or some enough caliber spiritual caliber who are doing this particular remedy for him what about these people who do nadi shastra and they say in tamil yeah. nadu they do yeah. puja kali yeah and they get the yantra they do the puja <coughs> and they charge yeah. you big money 25000 20000 yeah rupees. yeah what have you heard on those people i have no idea what i can say is my gut feeling is anybody who puts a particular price on it you should be suspicious You should, you should always be suspicious. Real, uh, I know, I know, I know. But there are people who don't give a damn about money. Sorry for my language, but there are people even today who don't really care about money. If such a person does a mantra, forget hundred and ten times, even one time in your house, the energy of your house will rise instead of a person who is running after money. If somebody is running after money, he is probably not worth it. But I just want to add a word of caution. It may be, it may be that a particular nadi reader doesn't really care about money, but you are supposed to basically let a lot of money go, and maybe yeah. that is how. Do that karma. Yeah. So that is why maybe it is actually prescribed there. Maybe that is why he is telling you. So you can never be sure what the person's intentions are. But if, if it is somebody who is running after money, he is not worth it at all. He can't do anything for you. What getting the remedy. Pardon me. What is the remedy in that case? Get some other Brahmin to do. Find a good Brahmin. There are some even today, here and there. As Kali Yuga becomes deeper and deeper, you will have fewer and fewer of those people. But even today, you can find people who are really spiritually advanced and who don't really care about material things. So try to find somebody like that. And if you can't, do it yourself. You may not do a very good job. You may not be well trained, but. it is better to do yourself than hire somebody for 25000 rupees and him basically doing a stupid job at least if you have the devotion that guy who is running after money he may not even have the devotion if you have the devotion maybe you can do a better job if you do the homa yourself but the fact is taking that money he is burning that much karma here yeah that that is the other thing by taking that money he is burning some part of the karma he is taking some of it on him Yeah. By, by Actually, these guys who are running after money, who cheat people, who say, who come up with terms like, "Oh, you have karkota kala sapa mahadosha." So I, I heard somebody. He actually has kala amrita yoga, but somebody says kala sir kala sarpa, but kala sarpa is not scary enough. So he comes up with a term karkota kala sapa maha mahadosha. So basically, you get scared. Oh my God, karkota ka karkota is a great snake from the mythology. so he think you think oh my god karkota guy is after me <laughs> and then you get scared and then he says you have to do it but I, i know another case where a priest who actually does pujas for so many people here he's a he's a he from ashram temple for me no not no no he's not from a temple he just does voluntarily he's actually not a priest by profession but he is basically like a priest he does so many homas so he went to india and then some Some astrologer he knew recommended him some some other astrologer in India, not astrologer, yeah astrologer. So he went there. He said your daughter has so and so kala sarpa dosha, so you have to get so and so homa so and so so and so mantras done. He said, oh I know those. Can I do it? How many times? How many thousand times should I do? He said, no 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 no. 
If you do it, it won't work. Only my priest has to do it. Then only it will work. So he basically forced him. Get it done by my priest and of course it will cost 10,000 rupees or something. Some change it will cost you. And you are from US, so it's not a big deal for you. So that's the attitude. So when anybody says you can't do it or somebody else can't do it, only my person can do it, it's basically like a business deal. Business deal between the priest and the astrologer. So all these things you have to be careful about. So when I do these remedial chapter and remedial measures, I just want to mention that getting them done right is more important than getting them done. And getting getting them done right may not mean getting them done by just paying some Tom, Dick and Harry. So you should know which priest you are going to. If you know, for example, if your family has been going to a particular priest and you know about that priest, that priest is a good idea. Whether he specializes in this Homa or not, you can tell him what to do, you can show him the verses, then he can he can figure out. Because any priest who is trained in certain Homa will be able to do these Homas also, even if he is not specifically trained. So maybe if you know a priest like that, maybe get it done by that priest. But again, I, I think last several classes you yeah. have mentioned that the best form of remedi remedy is yeah. prayer. Right. Rather than wearing a gem. Or this is not wearing a gem. No, no, I know. I'm just giving an example. Right. That that is, isn't that like the most redeeming way of asking yes. for forgiveness? Yes. Prayer is the best way. And the, the this particular prayer, he is talking about Homa. So when you burn, what happens is when you when certain Vedic chants are being chanted, there is certain energy in the air. And when that energy is there and you are firing, if the spiritual caliber of the priest is good enough, actually devatas can come also at that time. When you are offering food in the fire, devatas can come in the fire. As fire. They don't take they don't have bhu, jala, etc. Just as fire basically. They take Actually, most of these higher deities, they are of Akasha Tattva. They don't have any other elements. They are basically pure Akasha. And they can take the form of fire also and come in the fire. And then they can offer, they can accept your offering. When they do that, that energy basically spreads around. And what happens is, the, the smoke that comes from the fire, when it has that energy, when it goes inside you, the smoke can basically, uh, uh, when the smoke is inhaled, your Sokhmasirira basically can, it, it can't take Bhu and Jala, but it can take Vayu and Akasha. And similarly, your Karanthirira can take Akasha. The vibrations in the Akasha around you, your Karanthirira can actually be impacted by it. Just like if you hit me, my body is impacted because this is basically Bhu impacting Bhu. Similarly, because this is Tholasirira, you need Bhu or Jala or something impacting it. Uh, what I have done after this class and everything. Yeah. I made a pledge to get Navgara idols from India. Okay. Set, one I'm donating to Kinya Mission. Very good. And one to, there is a temple in Oxford called Sarvodev Mandir. Okay. Because right now there's only Navgara <coughs> idols in Ashland. Ashland temple, yes. So we have chosen a date, September 23rd. It's a okay. Saturday morning. Okay. And the priests have only chosen it from Kinya Mission. Okay. Where we are going to the Consecrate the idols and. Huh. Yeah. I would like this class if they are free to attend that. Okay. Uh, I think it would be nice. So on September 23rd at the Chenmaya Missions Temple in, uh, in Andover. Yes. In Andover on Route 28. She she is donating a set of Navagrahas, the nine planets. So they are going to consecrate those planets on September 23rd. So keep your diary open. And if you are available that day, it will be great if you can yeah, attend. Please come. It will, I, I think it will be from 8 to 10, followed by lunch. Okay. Hmm? And maybe Stacy, if you want, you can send out an email. Very good. At least to our group here. Yeah. You can post it. Post to your group in that time. Should I do hmm? that? Yeah, you can do that. Please do that. You can post it. All the members post it. Okay. So you could check anyway. Yeah, is that a good deal? Why don't you... Oh. Because the priest has selected it, we will not say if it's a good date or bad date. We'll, I just want to, I'm just curious. No, there were two reasons why we okay. chose September 23rd. The first day of the Akshay Masa, okay. The one was that my husband's death anniversary is September 15th. So I we see. can wait for a year. Yeah. And then this seemed to be an appropriate on a week, weekend. Okay. Is that what, what how do you... Good, good. I, I like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What time is the Muhurta for the consecration? He's not given me an exact time, but we are looking at between 
between 8 and 10. Is there a particular time you would suggest we should do it? No, 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 actually forget it. Let him do what he does. But in general, hmm. the whole time, hmm. uh, so it will start in Kanjalagna on that day. Hmm. So around from 8.40 or so, it is Turalagna. Hmm. So that is good. It looks very good to me. 8.40 a.m.? Yeah. So after 8.40 a.m., suppose by the time actually after the initial procedures, the main event, the consecration, suppose it happens, let's say, 9, 9.30 like that, mm. it will be basically Tula Lagnam. Mm. The Lagnam will be Tula mm. with, the, uh, with Jupiter in Lagnam mm. and you have all these planets in the 12th house. Mm. Excellent. Ketu is in the 12th, Sun, Moon, Ketu, Mars, Mercury. Everybody is in the, everybody is in the 12th house. 12th house of Moksha is extremely strong. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's very good, it's very good. Good. <coughs> good. Also, I think the day is Brahma Yoga, very good. Brahma Yoga, Hasta Nakshatra is a good nakshatra for this kind of activity. Mm. Brahma Yoga, Shukla Pradipati is a mixed tithi, but it's, it's the first day of the Devi Navratri. So, very good, excellent. Mm. So, all the best. Mm. Now we will stop the BPHS and we will do one example and then we will leave. What Nithinala said is um, yeah. uh, mother said but data is not there. Yeah, yeah. so, so we will we'll take his example and uh, we'll take his, right. his data, okay. So we will take the example of one, one of the students of the class who is not here today. He, his mother is sick. She is in the last stage of cancer. She is in the last stage of a particular kind of cancer. So he wanted to see Three to six months. So apparently doctor said three to six months. Hmm? You have it? Mitnala. Okay. So he was born on Amavasya. He has Amavasya Dosha. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I will give the data once again. Actually, yeah, the moment I opened Amavasya showed up, so I was curious. October 21st, 1968, 6.31 p.m. Indian Standard Time, Pradha Tour, India. 78 degrees 33 minutes east, 14 degrees 44 minutes north. Okay? So he was born on an Amavasya and Sreshu, you are saying percentage left. For Amavasya, you don't care. Only for Krishna Chaturdasi you care about the percentage. Yes. Amavasya, whole Amavasya is a dosha. Mm. Can you please show mapping? Yeah, yeah, I am doing that. Okay, here you go. Oh, he has both south. Almost both. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is son's chart. This is our friend Ramakrishna Rao, Mitnal Ramakrishna Rao's chart. And his mother is sick. So how do you, how do you see mother? Go to D12 directly. Actually, before we do that, let us first check the Shuradasha, the Matra Shuradasha. Before we go to the D12, just based on the Rashi chart. He is a uh, potentially fatal dasha running for mother. So how do you do that? Do you remember what I told you about Shuradasha? We can start Shivaladasya from the 4th house to see mother, ninth house to see father, 3rd house for sibling, etc. Right? So, which house should, should Shivaladasya start from? You select, instead of first self, which is the default, you select 4th, mother. Okay? And then you get the Matra Shivaladasya, which is basically started from the 4th house, meaning the stronger of the 4th and 10th house. So, what dasha is running right now? Scorpio Dasha is running right now. Is that a fatal Dasha for mother or not? What are the rules? Do you remember? First for native. Arudha Lagna and the trines are fatal. Right? For native. Third from Arudha. But uh, yeah, third from Arudha are Arudha Lagna and the trines. These are the fatal, fatal ones. And for father and mother, what did I tell you earlier? A9 for father, A4 for mother, etc. So the corresponding Arudha, the trines from it are fatal. That is one thing. Also 
But for the native, we want mother. So for that, you take the sthirakarka of mother. Right? The sthirakarka of mother shows. The charakarka for mother, matrakarka, he shows mother from the point of your sustenance, activities, rajogas, etc. But if you want to see the death or mortal suffering, it's not death, at least mortal suffering of mother. For that, you see the sthirakarka. So sthirakarkas are shiva rupas. Charakarkas are Vishnu Rupa, Naisargika Karkas are Brahma Rupa. So this is, this is the association. So we are seeing for the purpose of suffering and death. So you use the Sthira Karka. How do you see Sthira Matra Karka? Either Mars, excellent, you, you remember. Mars or Moon? Which one? Which one is stronger here? Moon is much stronger. So, so Kanya, right? So you take the you take you take Virgo and where is F4? Third from it. F4 is the third from moon. Uh, Scorpio. So the trines from one of these can be the killer killer for mother. So what is the Rasa running right now? Scorpio is running right now. Is that a killer sign? Is that a killer there is there potential for killing mother? Yeah. Huh? It's a trine from A4. It's not trine from moon, but it is a trine from A4. Okay. What is the trine from A4? A4 is here, right? Mm -hmm. Or in the North Indian style here. Mm -hmm. okay. So Scorpio is A4. Yeah. Which is the first house? First house itself. So compared to the all the trines, basically that house itself is even stronger. So it is the A4. So it can it can basically potentially bring death of mother. But the Scorpio rules till uh, 2013. Right. 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 This is basically not for timing, pinpointing mother's death. Yeah. Actually using Sholadasya it is possible. But we will not, we will never ever go into that. So we will not do that. All we will do is basically some sanity check. This is only sanity checking. Mm. Is there some potential or not? So that's all we are seeing here. Okay. Sir, the, where did we see the Sirkarata um, moon or Mars and then we said it's moon but uh, what did we use that sir? Oh, we could have used it. Suppose it was Kanya Dasha, it was It would have been even stronger candidate for killing. Okay, so that's not the Basically, the, the trines from the Sthirakaraka are the trines from A4 are the killers. Okay. So, there should be some link both say, the way. When you say trines, it's 1, 5 and 9. Yeah, 1, 5 and 9. Okay. So, here it contains one trine lord from the moon and it, it is A4. It is a trine from A4. So, there is a link between the two. Okay? Moon, a trine from A4? Not moon. Uh, from moon, if you take the trines, they are uh, they are Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. So Lord of Taurus is Venus. He is the Lord of one of the trines from Matrakarka. Mm -hmm. He is in A4. So I, that particular sign, Scorpio, has a link with A4 as well as uh, link with a trine from A4 as well as link with a trine from moon. So it is basically linking the linking the two. So there is a chance, there is a decent chance of some suffering to the mother or even death of mother during this particular dasha. Scorpio is a good uh, three and nine years. Yeah, yeah. So from 2004 to 2013, there is some chance. Now let us see the. Now we are done with this. Now let us see the dashas. What dasha applies in this case? Just Vimshotri, right? We use Vimshtala several times. I think only Vimshtala. Let us see Navamsha. Yeah, Navamsha Lagna is not Vargottama. Lagna Lord is not in the seventh house. Seventh Lord is not, not in Lagna. Lagna doesn't have sun. So none of the conditions apply. So we just use the Vimshotri Dasha. So let us switch to Vimshotri. So Vimshotri Dasha from the moon. So what Dasha is he running? He was actually in Dasha Chidra. He, he is in Dasha Chidra, which means basically the boundary of two different Dashas. Usually Dasha Chidras are difficult times when there is a lot of changes going on in life and it is difficult to cope with. So he is in Dasha Chidra, point number one. So he is in Dasha Chidra. 
and he just started Saturn Saturn. So right now he is running Saturn Saturn Saturn. He is fully under Saturn's influence. Uh, and let us see the Dwada Samsa now. Right? Mm. Actually, before we do that, when we want to see suffering or death of either the person or a family member, should we always use the normal Vimshotri or can we use the variations like Shema Vimshotri, Adhan Vimshotri if they are stronger? We never use them. Pardon me? We never use them. We never use them. Why? But, if you, are, if you are trying to time death, uh, either, either of the native or father or mother or brother, etc., mm -hmm. those dasas can work better than Vishwatri when they are applicable. Okay? So, let us see if any of them is applicable. So, if you do the Vishwatri seed strength comparison in the Jehora, how many are in Kendras from moon? Five planets are in Kendras from moon. You see here. Right? What about Utpanatara? Only two. What about Kshemanakshatra? Only two. What about Adhana? Only one. What about Lagna? Only one. So, Janma is the stronger. So, we did this exercise for no use basically. But, had Kshema been stronger or Adhana been stronger, you can use Kshema and Adhana for death. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is, uh, if you had uh, more planets in them. Yeah, more planets in them. Suppose Janma had, Janma Nakshatra had only two planets in quadrants from it, whereas Kshema Nakshatra, let us, say, let us say, had five in quadrants from it. Still, for all general results in life, you would use normal Vimshotri. For death, you would have used the Kshama Vimshotri. You usually don't check them, but it's a good idea to check. In my experience, they work better as Ayurdasa. As Faridasa, you give weight to the normal Vimshotri. So, if you do that, uh, it is still Saturn. So, Saturn, Saturn, Saturn is giving some suffering to the mother and the possibility of possibility of passing away. How is Saturn for mother? How do you see? Pardon me? Yeah. So, to see the mother, we use Graharudha, right? Yes. <coughs> Where is L4? Where is L4? No, L4 is in Sagittarius, right? So, in the North Indian chart, it is here, Sagittarius, nine, ninth sign, Sagittarius. So, that is the lagna that you should take if you are judging how the time is for mother. So, how is Saturn Dasha? Jupiter is actually much better. He is lagna lot in the 10th house. But if you take Saturn, how is Saturn? Pardon me? He is the second lord in the 3rd house. Ketu is the twelfth lord, fine. So, what are the houses of death? Twelfth house? Second and seventh. Second and seventh. Third and eighth are the houses of? Houses that basically sustain the longevity. Third house gives you vitality. And the eighth house gives you long life. And any weaknesses there will basically rob your vitality and your longevity. Okay? Similarly, the second house and the seventh house, they are the twelfth from third and eighth respectively. So, they show loss of vitality. Second shows loss of vitality and seventh shows loss of longevity. So, the second house and seventh house are particularly important and third house and eighth house, when they are weak, when they are afflicted by male fix or when they are robbed of their strength, again they are also bad. And I told you earlier, third lord in second, second lord in third, seventh lord in eighth, eighth lord in seventh. This kind of combination should be watched for. And here, who are the strong markers? Mercury, Mercury is a very strong marker. Why? He is the seventh, seventh lord in the seventh house. So, for mother, Mercury is a very strong marker. If you see, we saw another example last, last class. Husband passed away. When we saw the Navamsa and we saw the L7, seventh, seventh, seventh and second were involved, if I remember right. So, always second and seventh are involved. So, seventh lord in the seventh, definitely he is a strong marker. So, Mercury is one marker. Who is the second lord? Saturn. Saturn. And where is he? He is in the third house. So, second lord in the third house. And he is also the third lord. So, he, he has a mixed agenda. Give the vitality at the same time. Take away the vitality. But, 
इस प्लेसमेंट इन द थर्ड हाउस इज इट गुड फॉर थर्ड राइट बट राइट बट ही इज सैटर्न ही फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ही सेकंड लॉर्ड सेकंड लॉर्ड इन द थर्ड एंड सैटर्न बींग द थर्ड लॉर्ड इन द थर्ड हाउस इज इट गुड इन जनरल सैटर्न इन थर्ड इज गुड बट थर्ड लॉर्ड इन थर्ड इज इट गुड फॉर थर्ड एनी अदर प्लान इट गुड बट फॉर सैटर्न फर्स्ट हाउस इज मणगार का स्थाना सो इफ यू टेक थर्ड हाउस एज लग्ना बेसिकली फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द थर्ड हाउस इज इन मणगार का स्थाना आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर If a planet is in Mangalgarh sthana from its own sign, for example, let's say Jupiter is in Taurus, is it good for Pisces? He is in Mangalgarh sthana from Pisces. Forget whatever lagna is, irrespective of the lagna, taking Pisces as lagna, its own lord is trying to kill it. He is in Mangalgarh sthana from it. Similarly, let us say Venus is, let us say, in Pisces, it's not good for Libra. He is in Mangalgarh sthana from Libra. You understand? Mm-hmm. From Libra, if you take Libra as Lagna, the sixth house is Pisces. So if Venus is exalted in Pisces, as far as Libra is concerned, from the perspective of Libra, he is in Mankar ka sthana. Mm-hmm. So he hurts Libra. Although he is exalted. In Pisces. Although he is exalted, mm-hmm. he is good for Taurus, but he, he is not so good for Libra. Mm-hmm. He may promote it to some extent, but he can also do give a fatal blow to Libra at some point of time. Yeah, actually, that is the other interesting point. So, third lord, Rahu. the third lord Saturn and Rahu, they are basically with the eighth lord. So, basically, on this axis, the eighth lord Moon is being afflicted by Rahu, Saturn, and Ketu. So, all these malefics are afflicting the eighth lord. So, there is a connection with the eighth also. Saturn is not only linked with the second and third houses; he has a link with the eighth house also. He is unfortunately afflicting. Moon being afflicted by Rahu, Sani, and Ketu is not good. So eighth lord from L4 is being afflicted. So and and moreover, the third house, it is being afflicted by Saturn and Ketu. Any house if Sani and Ketu are in that house, they will basically destroy that house. They, they, they don't basically promote. But here Sani being the third lord, he has some interest in promoting that house. But still, he is in Manakar ka sthana. He is not so good in promoting that particular house. And Ketu, he burns any house that he is in. So the Sani Ketu combination, especially given that there is a there is an eclipse of Moon going on on that axis, it is not so good. So Saturn Saturn period doesn't see so good for Mother. But uh, when you said the uh, Saturn in third house there is itself not very good. Yeah. But uh, that way any planet in its own house, as you said about the Jupiter. Yeah. Uh, Jupiter being in one house is fine. No, but Jupiter in Pisces. From Pisces, he is in uh, Mercury. No, no, no. If he is not, not if he is in Pisces. Not if he is in Taurus. Third house. If it's in third house. Yeah. Okay. Third lord in the third house. Let's say Mars is in Aries. Aquarius lagna. Mars is in Aries. He is fine. Third lord in the third house. He is excellent. Only for Saturn. If he is in one sign, that yeah. sign can actually suffer. Okay. Only for Saturn. He is the only one who can make his own thing suffer. Other planets, they can make his own thing suffer, but if they are somewhere else, not in that particular sign. If Saturn, if Venus is in Libra, he won't weaken Libra. He will weaken Libra if he is in Pisces. Similarly, Jupiter will weaken Pisces if he is in Taurus, not if he is in Pisces. But Saturn is the only guy. He will weaken the sign that he occupies, even if it is his own. Saturn is the only exception. And moreover. The fact that he is with Ketu that helps. If Saturn was alone, even though he is in Mankar ka sthana, still he wouldn't have really punished that much. The third, being in the third in Mankar ka sthana, he would have given some la- loss of vitality. Vitality would have taken some death blow, but maybe he wouldn't have acted as a maraka. Would, would yes. Any mantra help? Yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. But the thing is, this Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, this combination on Moon, this is terrible. And forgetting L4, etc., all the heavy analysis. If we just come to very simple common sense, who's the karga for Mother? Moon. 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 So if you take, if you just look from the point of view of Moon, Moon is beaten down by all these male fixes in this particular chart. And in general, actually, forgetting other things, in general, eighth lord in ninth house. Yeah, eighth lord in the ninth house from L4, but apart from it. Moon being in the Madhakasthana from Lagna, for this particular Lagna, Moon is Madhakasthana, 
and moon afflicted with rahu shani and ketu all the malefic all the terrible malefic this shows that there is some weakness in the mother 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 is either unhealthy or has some sadness mother mother basically has seen lot of ups and downs in life so in general forget the dasha of shari running right now in general mother is not very fortunate okay that is one thing that you can say that is a general result and particularly here in shari dasha or rahu dasha particularly those results can come to the front so shari shari is not looking that good but look for look at prachanda dasha if the shari prachanda dasha is fine how is the next prachanda dasha of mercury that is actually boss he is the real marka shari is also marka but mercury is the eighth seventh lord in the seventh house so he is a marka so it doesn't look good actually in my view the time after november is even worse compared to now november 17 to april 19 is the worst time in my view shari shari mercury let us see the annual chart let us see the annual chart that is running right now who is the ruler of the year mars ruler of the year is mars and how is this year where is l4 l4 is in virgo uh, that means we take we took mars to be stronger i see okay so how is the time right now from l4 how is the how is the time right now it's uh, why is mars stronger than what is the house of diseases 6th house 8th house what is the house of diseases according to parashara Okay. Why don't you just say six and eight? Then you are covered. <laughs> Cover all the bases. Long term, like, yeah. Long term diseases, fatal diseases. Those are all from the eighth house. Whereas a temporary sickness that can be cured basically. Those are from the sixth house. Okay. And actually, Parashara says that eighth house is the house that shows diseases. Sixth house is the house that shows enemies. That is what Parashara says. But we normally use the sixth house also for diseases. And in general. Sixth house is for agantuka disease. Basically, a virus comes, you catch a cold, and you suffer for a week. That is basically sixth house. Or uh, you fall, and then you get hurt, and then an infection comes. That infection stays for let's say a month. That is again sixth house. Whereas you have a cancer, or you have TB, or you have a brain tumor. These are all eighth house related things. How is the eighth house? From L four. from l4 of course we are not looking at his disease we are looking at mother's disease no gulika no gulika from virgo from virgo the eighth house is eighth house is ruled by the ruler of the year so ruler of the year rules third and eighth houses and it is exalted actually it is exalted but with retrogression so equivalent to debilitation so that is actually not that bad but still he is the 8th lord he is the ruler of the year he is the 8th lord at least is the 8th house good there is an eclipse of sun there 12th lord is there yeah 12th lord being in 8th is not that bad it is viprit raj yoga but sun is exalted yeah but but sun is exalted moreover he is being eclipsed by ketu and rahu is looking at him and mars is also having grah drishti on him so sun is with ketu rahu and mars are aspecting him so there is a uh, there is a strong problem in the 8th house and what is sun's agenda sun in the 8th house can give disease but what is his actual agenda 12th house 12th house what is 12th house agenda imprisonment hospitalization imo being immobile uh, being limited to a particular place house arrest these are all the results that the 12th lord wants to give also moksha sadhana moksha these are the results that that 12th lord wants to give and being with ketu in the 8th house he can basically give a disease and especially when tamasic planets like rahu and ketu and saturn are involved it can be cancer mm-hmm. cancers are unlikely to be caused if there are uh, if there aren't any tamasic planets cancer is a tamasic disease 
Whereas there is extra growth like a tumor, brain tumor, etc. Uh, too much of growth. Those are usually Jupiter Venus. Yeah, Jupiter Venus should be involved. Rajas, Rajas is also possible. But not tamasic. Those are not tamasic. So here Ketu and Rahu are there. So there is a possibility. Cancer, won't you say it's a growth of uh, something? Is, is it growth or is it death of self? Well, it's growth. It's a growth. Uh, then I will, I take back my comment. I don't understand what cancer is then. My understanding was that cancer is basically a... Destruction. Destru a certain cells basically dis destroyed. being destroyed. And then the destructiveness basically is spreading. It's spreading, but what is spreading is dis being killed, the destructive nature. So that is my, it is doing, but my it understanding. Is killing the process, right? Killing the other yeah. cells. The process of killing various cells is basically growing in the body. Basically growing the negative cells. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what is the dasha that is, when, when was this diagnosed, this uh, cervical cancer? Middle of July. Yeah. So this was dis Saturn. this was basically discovered in Saturn Dasha. Why? Why was it why was it discovered in Saturn Dasha? Is it possible? It's not in the natal chart, but um, things can be caused in Saturn or Yeah, that is natal, but in Tiri Pravesh. He is the fifth and sixth lord. Moreover, whose results will Saturn give? Mars results. And who is Mars? King of the year and eighth lord. So the result could have been could have been given by Sun himself or Mars. The planet in the eighth sun or the lord of the eighth Mars, one of the two could have given it. So it basically ended up being given by Mars and Saturn gave that result on behalf of Mars. And by the way, you have to remember that Saturn is the karka for all disease. All disease and suffering, the significant is Saturn. He is the project manager. So, project manager and the group manager, Mars, that together. So, is this generic? If somebody started Saturn Dasha, you are going to see some disease? Not really, not really. <laughs> Unless that Saturn has association with the 6th house, 8th house, planets in the 6th, 8th, it, it won't happen. But what I am saying is, he is the Karaka. Yeah, so, karaka or based on the analogy that I gave earlier, the Karaka is like a project manager. And the planets in the house are like? the group members and the lot of the house, the corresponding house, for example, 8th house and 6th house here, they are like the group managers of the groups which are taking part in this project. But Karaka is the overall boss who is responsible, who is accountable for this particular project. So what you do is, you find out links between them. So Saturn and Mars, when they are together, if you ask Saturn to give Mars results, he may or may not give. He may say, well, I don't like Saturn. They don't really like each other. Both are tamasic. But still, both are at loggerheads with each other. What if there was one more planet whose result do you think it would be? You have to arrange in the order and then you see. So, that would have been different. But here, what I am saying is, Saturn giving mass results is not always, the, always necessary. Even if they are together, Saturn may say, forget it. You give your result, I will give my result. You drink your juice, I will drink my juice. Like that he may be. Because they are like, they are like, Always fighting. One is very slow, one is very fast. They are like different ends of the spectrum. So they don't like each other. But here, they join their hands. Why? Because Mars is the eighth lord, Saturn is the sixth lord. And Sa Sa Mars is the lord of the house that shows disease, Saturn is the karaka for disease. And, and, and the fact that Mars is retrograde, does it make it slower? Mars is retrograde, that doesn't really make it any slower here. That doesn't have any impact. So, so Saturn ended up giving the result. How is the next period Jupiter? Also, is there any um, relation with the current transit of uh, this in the house of moon? Pardon me? Both these planets in the current present transit in the house of moon. So? Does it have any link with... Uh, you, you see, the thing with astrology is we can put links based on our, our wish. But the thing is, when Saturn is in moon sign, mother suffering, it's, not, it's a generic thing. If you say that Saturn in moon sign is conducive to suffering of mother and Saturn in sun sign in the next two and a half years is conducive to the suffering of father, statistically it doesn't work out. So it doesn't make lot of sense. But you can you can look at transits. You can look at transits for this chart. For this particular chart. How is his L, where is his L4? L4 is our reference for mother, right? 
How is his help for? No, where is it? Do you remember? In his natal chart. Not this chart. Natal chart. Does anybody remember where L4 was? No, no, which sign? Which sign was L4 in? Remember, Saturn and Ketu were in third from L4, right? Aquarius. Aquarius was the third house. Where was L4? Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Right? So, if you remember, his natal L4 was in Sagittarius. Actually, let's go back to the natal. So, where is where was Saturn transiting? All this while. So, from L4 in Sagittarius, Saturn is transiting in the eighth house. So, from L4, Saturn's transit is not good. And his dasha started recently. For me, right now, right now, yes, right now. So, Mars and Saturn are both at this time basically they were transiting in uh, Cancer. So that wasn't that wasn't good, and at that time Saturn just started, and Saturn was in the eighth house. So th that basically increases the chances. So like this, you can look at the transits also, but for that use the natal chart. Use the natal chart. Yeah, and don't use Cancer being moon sign. Just use the fourth house, L4, etc. In this particular chart, that is more logical. Okay. Yes, we'll come to that now. So we need relief from Saturn. What can be the relief? What can you use for relief? Okay, praying to Venkateshwara. What else? Always, when somebody is in danger of death, there is nothing like Mahamrityunjaya Mantra. Okay? So, you can chant the Mahamrityunjaya Mantra 108 times for her every day, if you can. Take her name in the beginning, basically. Say Sankalpam. I want my mother's good health and longevity and then do the Mahamrachinjaya Mantra that will definitely uh, if it doesn't if it doesn't avoid the death it will at least make it better and also give better gati after that so Mahamrachinjaya and there is a chance of actually saving also I know one person he was a young man he suddenly they discovered he was he was catching cold very frequently and then they discovered that he had some kind of blood cancer and then doctors said well it's a, it's a little advanced and he's going to live for maybe three or six months. There is a slim chance of survival, but it's almost zero. So three to six months he will survive. That's what they said. And then he, his sister, they were doing the Mrityunjai Mantra and uh, actually several pujas were done for him and that person survived. He, he is doing fine now. He Did he have a bone marrow transplant? Uh, not transplant, but he went through some chemotherapy, etc. Yeah, that worked for him. He's just lucky. He's a healthy, he was a very healthy young man. And interesting thing is, he was, he is in his thirties now. And his parents were putting pressure on him to get married. But somehow he didn't want to marry. Somehow, basically, internally, he knew that something like this was going to come. He's a very nice person, very spiritually advanced kind of person. Even though he doesn't do a lot of pujas, he's a very spiritual person internally. So he basically postponed getting married and then he went to an art deal for a couple of years. It didn't take like three, three, six months. After three, six months, there was some relief. But for him to get fully cured, it took him two, three years. And now he is, uh, also the chemotherapy makes, made him so <coughs> weak. So now he is slowly coming back to his normalcy. He is doing all the, he is going to work, he is doing regular, regular, regular things and then he is, uh, He's even exercising now. He's basically back to normal. Do you see it in his chart that he would be able to survive? Actually, I, what I told his sister when his sister came to me was, it's very critical. Next six months are critical, but if he survives these six months, there is a very good chance that he will, will do fine later. <coughs> the thing is, this guy has a lot of excellent karma to be done. So he, he, the thing is, when you, when somebody, somebody goes very close to the death, if they make a woe, I don't know if he did or not, but I'm in general saying, if they make a vow, I'm just going to dedicate my life. This is not my life. This is her life or his life. I'm going to dedicate, dedicate it and do whatever he or she wants. There is a chance that you will survive, even if it's a very terminal disease. If you really have that devotion, but then you have to dedicate your life to that particular cause later. Mm -hmm. So my feeling is this person, now that he survived, he will do some really, really big things for Hinduism in the next few years. That is my feeling. Anyway, so the bottom line is, 
just because doctors say 3 to 6 months maximum doesn't mean is 3 to 6 months the person can go on to live another decade that is not impossible at all so let us operate on the basis of hope that there is some chance because if you say well it's a margadasha margadasha running as per shola margadasha is running the annual chart also looks good so he is going to die then there's no uh, there's nothing basically productive in it on the other hand if you suggest something then there is productive actually before i do that let us see is there a chance of death this year in this annual chart we saw it in the natal chart but is there a chance but that was 9 years long mm-hmm. and even the shani 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 even the shani shani other dasha is a couple of years and we said that shani shani mercury is stronger candidate basically after november so let us see in this city pravesh chart is there a chance of death is the seventh house strong not really seventh lord jupiter is with the ninth lord venus we don't really see any strong marka combinations we see combinations of disease because eighth house has sun and ketu and eighth lord mars is with shani but we don't see the strong possibility of death in this particular year chart how is the next year but rahu is sixth lord in second house for me rahu ya yeah, sixth lord in the seventh house but i wouldn't consider that to be a marka combination any malefic in the second house is capable of killing but i i'm not really that concerned about it had he been the seventh lord in the second it would have been more or uh, third lord in the second would have been more concerning how is the next year where is l4 l4 is in pisces are there any strong marka combinations in this year Lagna Lord Jupiter is in the seventh house with a very strong seventh lord, and the same Mercury, his other dasha will start around October. November. Ah, uh, yeah, October, November. I don't remember exactly in the natal chart, and he is a strong marka in the natal chart also from L4, and the second lord Mars is with the eighth lord Venus. Second and eighth lords are together in the house of protection, in the house that is supposed to show protection. even though mars is also the ninth lord he is the second lord too maraka and he is with sixth and eighth lords so protection is being weakened by the sixth and eighth and moreover maraka sthana is so strong unless the second or seventh is very strong that is very unlikely so my feeling is even though they said 3 to 6 months it's probably not 3 months more like 6 months or probably even more my feeling is next year is a very strong there is a very strong chance so basically uh, let's not figure out the dasha next year but let us say until this october chance is very little of death but from this october to next october there is a strong chance now let us see what are the remedies that can work so shani and mercury right shani is the dasha lord and mercury is the percent of the dasha lord and also the marka in the annual chart so we have to do something for shani and mercury so brutjay mantra definitely one thing what else can we say या बुधा इफ इट इज बुधा वेंकट नारायण ओके या इफ इट इज बुधा व्हाट कैन यू सजेस्ट सम विष्णु फॉर्म व्हिच विष्णु फॉर्म कैन डिस्ट्रॉय डेथ व्हिच विष्णु फॉर्म कैन डिस्ट्रॉय डेथ हाउ इज मेरक्री इन द नेटल चार्ट विथ मार्स सो हु कैन यू सजेस्ट नरसिंहा सो यू कैन सजेस्ट नरसिंहा prayer of narsimha so for example ugram veera mahavishnu jalantam sarvadomukham rusimha bhishnam badram rucham rucham namam yaham so do that mantra 108 times narsimha kavacham narsimha kavacham is excellent so do either narsimha kavacham or sachanka for the script if you don't have it because he mentioned it he must i am assuming he must have so narsimha kavacham you can do you can actually you may be able to download on the internet also Oh, excellent. So, Narsimha Kavajam, our Ugram Viram Mahavishnu Jalantam Sarvata Mukham. It's a very powerful mantra, taught by Rudra himself. It's a Rudra Kurta mantra, the Padas Tvatram. Rudra himself taught that, and Rudra is the one who, when he withdraws his blessings, death comes. So, that Rudra himself taught this Narsimha mantra. So, do that mantra 108 times. Do Narsimha Kavajam. Another thing you can do is, for Mercury, to avoid death or to avoid strong suffering another thing you can do is sudarshan homa for mercury sudarshan homa basically sudarshana is vishnu's chakra yeah 
So get the if you can get a Sudarshan home of done in her name. Okay? And and it is a good idea when the home is being done, if the person is physically there, it's a good idea. Basically breathing some smoke from the homa, that is a good idea. Instead of doing it remotely. So if you can do a get a Sudarshan home of done uh, near her, that is that is a very good idea. So I'll suggest Sudarshan Homam, Narsimha Gavajam, Rudra Kurda Mantraja Mantram, Narsimha Mantram. And then, Trambukam Vajamahe do a mala every day without fail. I will read those two mantras. Om Triyambakam Yajamahe Sukandhim Pushti Vadhanam Urvarukam Yavapandhanam Murachor Mukshi Yamamrutat Ugram Viram Mahavishnum Jalantam Sarvato Mukham Jarasim Ham Bhishanam Bhadram Ruchum Ruchum Namam Yaham So, if you do these two mantras and then do mantras one mala every day and also read Narsimha Kavacham every day, again, before you do it, tell your mother's, mother's name in the Sankalpam. Just say a Sankalpam. You don't have to say it in Sanskritam. If you can, you can. So and so Gotra, so and so Nakshatra, so and so Rasho Jataya, so and so name, Namya, Kshayamas Thayri Vijay, Abhaya, Ayur Arogya, Aishwarya, Abhivrudhyartham. Then, like that, you can say, say the Sankalpam, standard Sankalpam. Or in English, you can say, for the good health of my mother and uh, for better health and longevity, prolonged longevity of my mother, I'm doing so and so puja and then you do it, okay? So if you do a little puja, there is a chance of some improvement and especially if you see the annual chart of 2005. You see Jupiter, yeah. Sometimes these pujas can work miracles, no? Yeah, they can. Puja and prayer. They can do miracles. So if you see Jupiter here, in this Dwarasamsa, this current year. Fourth Lord in fourth house. Yeah, from L4, Jupiter is fourth Lord in the fourth house. And he is with the ninth Lord. So Jupiter and Venus, even though he is a Maraka, except owning the seventh house, he has nothing to do with any Maraka Sthanas. And he is with the ninth Lord Venus. And he is aspecting the eighth house. So he is carrying some energy of the ninth Lord, the protector Venus. And then he is aspecting the eighth house. So he can actually put some protective energy into the eighth house, divert some protective energy into the eighth house and, and decrease the disease. If not cure, basically lessen the severity of the disease, of the cancer, so that life can be prolonged by a few years. That is a possibility. So as, when is Jupiter Dasha running? July 28th till September 29th. So, from July 28th till September 29th is your best opportunity. When Rahu's period comes again, not so good. But this is the period when there is some real chance of lessening the disease, lessening the impact. So during August and September, do meditation like a possessed man. Spend so much time in meditation, very, be, very sincerely. And don't have any expectations. As long as you say, okay, I'm doing this puja. Today I did 10 malas of Nuchinjaya Mantra, so my mother is going to be fine. As long as you have expectation that is new karma, without any expectation, just submit yourself to uh, Narasimha and, and Shiva and then do this mantra. And up to August and September are your, your opportunity. Okay, any other thoughts? You were saying something. Okay, any other thoughts? Any other recommendations? Okay, so with that we will end for today. Hopefully we hope that your mother's life will be prolonged by a few years because of the, it's basically a litmus test of how much meditation you do in the next two months. So leave it to the God and do your best, all the best. Okay, so we will end for today. In the next class we will continue our remedial measures discussion from BPHS. Next class are you here or you are? Oh, next class I am here. Is there anything special? Yeah, I am here. No, the week after that. I'll be, by the way, I'll not be here on the weekend of August 5 and 6. I'll be teaching Titi Pravesh in California, in San Jose, in Sunnyvale. So I'll be going to the SJC conference. So Saturday and Sunday I'll not be here. Maybe Narayan can take, his parents are here. So if he's busy with them, maybe we'll cancel the class. I will check with Narayan and tell you in the next class what, what will happen in the, what will happen in the August 6 class. I'll tell you whether the class is there or not. But next class is there. 
and we will continue this discussion. We will read BPHS for half the time and the other half we will we'll take an example. Next class. Yeah, you are in the queue. You are first in the queue. So okay. next class we will <laughs> take up yours. Okay? Okay. Thank so you. with that I will end today's class. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti